welcome, welcome. My name is Omar Omar Richter. And in the middle, we have the one, the only, the Angus, Angus Dr. <laughs> Random Moldy Angusy. <laughs> I guess I am of us three the most Angusy, that is for sure. That is, I think, a, a given. And to uh, my uh, whatever vicinity that Omar is not in, it we have <laughs> it's, it's the it's 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 the virtue it's cyberspace man it's, yeah it's tough directions are tough directions are tough. <laughs> do they even matter directions when you're in cyberspace yeah. i mean yeah. no exactly exactly in in the non-euclidean space that only he can inhabit we have arisimir politopoulos And this is also where you say, tonight we'll once again be playing with the past and you bounce to Omar and he's all like, oh no! <laughs> yeah. Oh no! Well, oh, no. I think the past like, like space plays with our perception in, in the virtual world. Ooh. Yeah, there we go. Um, Save that's so trail. deep, man. That's yeah. so deep. Yeah. So deep. Talking, like, a, talking about deep. Talking about. Last time we were pretty deep into a, a game of Civilization 4. <laughs> we were at least, I think, well, the. I was. You weren't. <laughs> <laughs> we we were at least we we were nominally present <laughs> as uh, as proud parents <laughs> who who are like, oh yeah, that's that's great what you're doing there in art class, Omar. Um, not speaking from experience, obviously, yeah. but uh, but but. Um, Yeah, no, uh, I think we made it all the way to the Middle Ages, or did you already even make it into the industrial... I think even the industrial age already, right? Uh, how can I see? <laughs> Does it show up somewhere? Uh, yeah, it, it's. I mean, I guess you're researching liberalism. That must be the industrial age, because everyone knows that's <laughs> what that happened. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that happened? Yeah, I sure, I, I don't know. Could be. Does it show anywhere? No, it doesn't, right? Now I've clicked something. Mm. Help. <laughs> Help. Help. Help! This this, hap this happens game. when one plays Civilization. That one clicks click something. something. Yeah, I click it fast. Also, We're hello, just big shout continue. out yeah. to everybody in chat who's just zoomed in here to just watch friend, us yeah. play this by now almost 20 year old game. Almost, 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 almost. It's great. It's crazy to think that frigging. C4 is almost 20 years old. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's not get there. Let's not get there because what no, but... one of the articles that we were reading is like, yeah, at Age of Empires that was released in 1998, and I was like, fuck you, fuck you, <laughs> fuck the you. Game from 1998. Yes, yeah. man. I, I I do like I do like being part of this uh, the the naive uh, 90s. Yeah, that is uh, the, the... so. Uh, Omar. Yeah, I'm just playing. What, what happened? Yeah, I see. Give us the brief rundown of what happened. Give us the brief. Yeah, exactly. What happened? You are you were hard at war with um, no one. I want to say pa Paraguay, but no. Down. But in the beginning, in the beginning, in the beginning, get get the chart in. Like get get the history chart and just tell us a little bit about what happened. What war? I didn't have any wars. There were no wars. What what game you were you were? You were but you're at? oh no wait you were you being overrun by the barbarians then? Yeah, your one city was taken over. Yeah, oh, that's but what that happened. took it back. It's this one. It's the yeah, yeah. The, the, the Vienne with the A <laughs> as opposed to to the Vienne with the E, which we also have. Yes, uh, yeah. which is uh, somewhere over here. Uh, here, <laughs> the Vienne with the E. Yeah, the Vienne with the E, and the, somewhere over there is Wien as well. <laughs> yeah, there are probably. <laughs> somewhere mm -hmm. anyway uh we're uh Char charles of maine i, I don't Sorry. know what i'm doing i honestly it was the first game of civ 4 i played in like 10 years But, mm, I mean, it, it all looks thriving and uh you know if we were looking it at looks power thriving, but, but but there is a french empire that is even more thriving yeah which i'm never yes. gonna take down because yeah So what's I the goal here? What's the, what's the game plan? I want to know the game plan. Um, the so game plan is um, win. Fun. That's an, wait, 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 wait. Come on, what's the goal here? Come on, come on. It is a good pun. <sighs> It was a good pun. I just wanted to acknowledge the, the pun. Okay, I'm so. out. Uh, you, good luck. Uh, see you. <laughs> good luck playing this game. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to watch football by... <laughs> You're going to watch the goal. <laughs> It's okay, vote kick Aris. <laughs> It keeps on giving. <laughs> If you serve me. 
<laughs> I will take it, you know? Mm -hmm. No, but I want to know the game plan. Hey, Jay. Hello, Jay. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to ignore I want to know the game plan as well. Um, ignore my stupid punch and take, give me the game plan. How there are we yes. friends? There, there is no game plan. Just, I, I don't know. Probably. Uh, are we I going mean, science victory? I mean, going mm, like random? No, that's not going to work. He's not going to, he's, he's gonna, not going to go for science victory and, uh, and, and win from the goal because the goal is already bigger. I, I honestly think... don't know. Okay, th so this is my this suggested is the... game plan. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, my suggested game plan is you start invading whoever is to your east. Mm -hmm. I'm just in time for you to discover liberalism. Yes, absolutely. Whoever is to your east. Uh, so there for sure you want to take out, uh, was it? Ooh? No, whatever it is. Ulsan. 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 I was like, what is Ulm doing there? You're gonna you're gonna get into um, uh, a bit of a toe to toe with Korea. I think that is your best bet because then you can expand eastward with a bunch of juicy cities there, and the goal can't really expand anymore. Yeah, but then I need so, to go aggressive, and I don't want that. Yeah, I mean, Omar. I mean, do you want to win or do you want to, you know? What uh, if I don't want to win? I mean, just say it, man. Yeah, say it. I mean, maybe I just want to. Would have been wise if if we said last couple of series that we didn't want to actually win this game. No, maybe, maybe I point. just maybe I just want to fuck fuck around and find out. Who knows? But you did say that this time we're gonna win. Mm -hmm. That's not what I said. That's what you said. That's 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 why we voted for you, Omar. Ah. Uh, okay. So now you have to figure out a plan to win. As my as your as your slowest clicking advisor <laughs> this would be my advice <laughs> is to start taking on korea uh, because it invading france um you know um ends poorly for uh, charlemagne i think in this particular case probably yeah in the game of civilization you win or you die <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> mm -mm. So that's what I would do, Omar. That's uh, what. What would you? What would you do uh, if you suggest a game plan as? Um, I really don't know. I think we haven't. I was thinking maybe the best course of action here would have been to go for. <laughs> You're uh, going for a forking path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been. I'm going no, for a. No, no, no. I'm going to veto that. I'm going to uh, stop no, no, you no. right there. No, would have been. No, would have been. Would have, would have, should have, didn't. On. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think it's a bit late now to go for a religious victory, is it not? A religious I, I, victory? What are you on about? Isn't there a religious victory in the... No, there no. isn't. I don't think there is. <laughs> no, I don't think there is. Wait, which ones were on in C4? I think How maybe I? there's a religious... There's probably a religious victory in... Um, Where's the victory screen? There you go. Religion advisor. There it is. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure. Wait, we, we 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 actually looked into this. Oh, there we go. Time, diplomatic, conquest, domination, yeah, cultural time. space, or yeah, diplomatic. Yeah, there is no. So you can go for diplomatic yeah. at at a certain point. Culture. Uh, that's that's still an option. You could genuinely go for a diplomatic victory. It's the most boring victory. Uh, Especially even e even for C4. Yeah, but cultural um, victory could have a similar effect to... I, I mean... I, okay, I don't know for sure, but I think cultural victory was um, a pretty tough one to get, actually. I mean... Uh, you, can, it's, uh, you can also see, uh, you can also see, you need a lot of wonders. Still needs to, and like, I, we still need to fuck up Korea, so... You yes, you still need to fuck up Korea. Yeah, yeah, you need like. Um, so they have two of the top five cities. So I mean. Yep. Yeah, I mean, what if we fuck up Korea and then we go for culture victory? You don't have to go for domination victory. You can after that you can oh, go we, for we, science victory. We cannot go for. I don't think we can realistically beat the French. In that no, ex I, yeah, I mean, you absolutely could if you just grind this whole continent to into your empire then you or you go for space <laughs> absolutely that could be an option but i think that we will be outproduced by by the goal 
I think that's what's going to happen at the, the end game. That was the first suggestion to go for a science victory, and then you said there is no way we can do a science victory. No, sorry, we, not like this. You cannot do. I, I think you take on Korea, and then I think you can more or less go for any victory that you would want. So the precondition you, here is that we take over Korea. That's you pound Korea. Yeah. Every winning path goes through yes. Korea, uh, conquering Korea. I don't want to quote Civilization 2 and their advisors, but I'm just going to say, I concur, Your Excellency. <laughs> that is... Uh, <sighs> all, 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 all the quotes the Elvis in there. Wise Missy. <laughs> all right, yeah, so we enable the first... We, we, we engage with the first part of the plan, and then we decide on the, on the victory condition. Because if, if I the... like, I like, I, well, what you, it, I mean, you can say whatever you want about Omar, but he's like, yeah, yeah, that's definitely what we're going to be doing. <laughs> he's yeah. just like, oh. Omar is empty. already hard at work. I mean, we're just doing it. We, we need to start somewhere, it. right? Yeah, yeah. Why are we still building trebuchets in 1800? Yeah. Because I don't have okay, cannons that's... yet. <laughs> yeah. So we have to start working as well, language because we have three texts to go through. Yeah, so All right, talk. Omar, when you've pounded Korea into dust, we'll get back to you. If any anything happens... Yeah, then, I'll let uh, you know. This, I'll, uh... I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We are... If you, By the way, if you want to um, uh, dig in with the text that we're going to be discussing, they are in our Discord. And uh, there was always like this one what lovely command I th that you could give to actually get get to our Discord server, or we just say we say some stuff and then it will actually give you the link. Say stuff. There we go. Wasn't there like Discord? Yeah, I think it's. I forgot what it was. Was it Discord? Let's. There let's, we go. I did this. There. Oh, there you go. Discord. There you go. I didn't didn't remember. So, if you become a member, you get in there. You get to have access to this hallowed knowledge that we're gonna be discussing. Kick it off. I know that you really, really want to talk about this article because you, you, it, it changed your life, uh, Alice. Okay, let me put it because I was a bit negative in the in the pre-discussion of this. You negative? No, no. you were not negative. No, you just the said you, you didn't care that. jack shit about this. But it's it's weird because I succinctly remember you being like getting a particular grant all about games in the classroom. Yes. So it's not like maybe I would I, I put a bit wrongly so there is an article by peter van in the boas called games in the classroom uh where he discusses among other things and most extensively a game of civilization and how game of civilization can be used in the classroom now yeah. going into it i well i hadn't checked the, the abstract before eventually obviously i did but when we were looking for articles on civilization, I didn't expect articles that do not deal with like the historical element. And this one is an article that discusses courses on information system modeling. All right. So I was you wanna you wanna hear my take why this is actually a pretty brilliant article to have as a follow-up to the last one we discussed. I will make a point about okay. it. Okay. And my point is one of the things that got me interested in the academic element of the games before I started thinking about games and history is particularly this ability of games to, to model, right? And not per se to model because I was never really into economic modeling or, or system modeling or whatever, but because I've played uh, Warcraft 3 and Starcraft 2 for a very, very long time and I played it uh, Competitively as well, and I was obviously interested in them in maxing. I was, I always had a great fascination for those who were analyzing these games with an economic mindset and the min maxing mind mm -hmm. mindset that follows this kind of modeling principles and then by extension, sort of a predictive modeling versus your opponent. Like, if you do this, then, then this, if you see this, then you need to react in this way, and this sort of logical train of thought. Um, based on modeling. So, on what I was sort of taken aback by the fact that we're not talking about history, but at the same time, it also felt kind of familiar. This is what I have to say. 
I mean, this is the. <clears throat> I don't, this is obviously not the first time that somebody discussed civilization in the context of uh, education. It is the first thing that I could find on Google Scholar, and therefore not necessarily published, but therefore at least hoovered up at some point by the, the Google uh, <laughs> Google robots, the Google bots. Uh, for that, I think already it's noteworthy, right? Um, I think it's also noteworthy because it's a rather early one, 1999, right? Um, and I think we needed to start with the civilization is good for education line of scholarship somewhere, and we might as well start with the earliest one we can find. Mm -hmm. And I, then I was absolutely delighted when I read this, um, because um, more or less what um, what. Uh, Peter van M. de Boas, I'm not delighted because this is a Dutch scholar, not at all, that, that has nothing to do with it, no nationalism uh, in, in that sense. It also had a pretty um, big dish on, on the Netherlands in the other case. A huge, um, a, a very, at that point in time particularly, but also this point in time still, Yeah. <laughs> good dish so. about the gender division of uh, people into uh, computer science. Yeah, that mm. um, No, but... What Peter van de Boos is doing here is, in fact, what uh, Friedman uh, was saying last week. Mm -hmm. That if you want to become good at civilization, you have to become cybernetic. You have to start thinking like a computer. Yeah. And um, what um, people in computer science do, they don't think like a computer, but they have to get into the information structure that a computer makes use of. And... At the same time, this already shows straight away why this idea of thinking like a computer, that doesn't really work for us. Because um, as he, in this article, it, it, it gets in, it clearly it gets into like a, like a, well, this is what it actually looks like in the data side of things, in the information system side of things. And then it just doesn't work if you want to visualize it like that for a human being. Or it just doesn't, um, you know, it, it doesn't really um, work for the way that the human mind works, right? And uh, people cannot sort of naively come up with these structures themselves. And I think that that's a very, to me, was a very fascinating insight yeah. into sort of as a little accidental discussion that this scholar is having with Friedman with this idea of you have to think algorithmic and then you're going to get there. Yeah. Um, and I mean... So, it is also about history, Aris. So on page 38, um, we have a well-defined universe of discourse is available. And we also have the, the statement, a certain amount of familiarity with the model to start with. Yeah. Most of these games are designed for youngsters at pre-college ages. Mm -hmm. And I think also simply the idea that you're talking about a history that people are know, knowing, mm -hmm. <laughs> who have some knowledge of, will help with modeling what is happening in civilization um, already. So, those were two points that I was like, yeah. You know, you know what's uh, happening in civilization? War. What's happening? War. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I think... Model. Yeah. Specifically, the, the program specifies the model completely. Yes, it's not per se the fact that... I, I, I didn't read this as... It happens to be historical. I think if it was any... Like, if it was another... If it was a sci-fi strategy, but it, it's specific, like it's it's inherent to the game. No, no, it's, 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 it's not game, about right? history. No, no, no. That it's inherent in being a game. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But I think no. that is um, still related to the to the Friedman bit. Yeah. And 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 so I already made another step here. Is that Sid Meier has always said, "Well, this is a model of history, right?" Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, and there is definite appreciation of this scholar of the fact that this is a pretty interesting historical game. Hello, Felix and Nigma. Hey, Felix. Good to have you here. We're diving deep into uh, this computer science education paper from 1990. Um, 1990. 1999. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. One, one nine too many. Um, yeah, so I, 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 really, I really liked... It's it's also it's also um, it's a bit of a weird assignment because you're basically asking 
to make a database model out of something what is already a database. So yeah. I think that kind of would break it as a computer science assignment nowadays because people are like, yeah, but why would we do that thing that is already clearly a database? It's not the same thing as making a database out of a corporate structure, for example, the, the yeah. very boring example that he sort of leads with. Yeah, I was thinking, I was also thinking about this. I was like, wait a minute, but I don't understand exactly what you ask them to model if it's already there. Like a lot yeah, of the, the yeah. assignments that he described felt like where there, there is a point about the tech tree, right? And to sort of visualize it in, in a more meaningful way. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, but that's also, I mean, I understand that it's not perfect, but also, okay. But I think it, to, to keep it to, in, to point by point here, just to mm -hmm. don't jump all over the paper. I have one thing to mention, and that is all, already early on, there are two mentions of pirate copies, and I think <laughs> that's a straight up like admission that he was just playing a pirate copy, or he was giving <clears throat> his students pirated copies. Yeah, he was giving his students pirated copies. Yeah, yeah. So, because I can't yeah. imagine him like buying however many no. Civilization games. Hey, Pajanin is there as well. Hello, good to have you all here. Wonderful. No, clearly, clearly was giving. But he, he he's talking about the official box and the, the material that comes with himself. So yeah. he must at some point have bought one copy. And that if you've bought one copy, of course you're gonna give it to your friends, right? That's how you, that's how things rolled in the nineties yeah. <laughs> and still nowadays. But it was this I guess. specific like quote where he says the information extraction aspect is encountered when one tries to understand the model from the documentation for the game. Mm -hmm. Parentheses frequently unavailable in case of pirate copies. I'm like right, <laughs> <laughs> right. It's it's an important. It's interesting because it does raise kind of a, an. Ex an experience question, right? So a lot of people in the 90s were playing pirated copies for a lot of games mm -hmm. and that somehow removed from the experience because games would come into boxes with a lot of supplementary material that you simply wouldn't get otherwise. Um, so there is truth to it, but I think it's also a call out to the fact that he was just giving pirated copies. Yeah, to this. Cl clearly, clearly. I think it's also, um, I mean, we talked about this with um, Civ 1, right? That you had these answers that you have to find, uh, that you had these questions you have to find the answers to in the manual, right? Also, Omar, my heart Omar, is Omar, what is happening? You're yeah. being, these, these archers. Come on, yeah, Trebuchet. Sorry. Come on, Trebuchet. No, the Trebuchet. Longbow men are so <laughs> effing annoying. Overpowered. Yeah, they're very overpowered in Civ 4, longbow men. Oh no, yeah. the horses are running over. Oh no, we got it. Okay, no. yeah, okay, okay, okay. We, we so basically, it. Civ 4 is just grinding your units until you like you've killed everything. I mean, this is this is what Civ 4 is just about completely. I'm just yeah. amazed at how many many frigging units they've got in there. That's just yeah. Well, not anymore. The Doomstack is <laughs> no, gone. so much is clear. They're clearly now wow. <laughs> scraping. Whoa, Whoa. this spike man. Oh, there we oh go. Okay. thank God. Yes. <laughs> Victory. Excellent. Now for the rest. <laughs> Wait, One small this? step what, for you've uh, got great, You've got a great general. Is that it? What you it's put? a warlord. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's it. A warlord. Yeah. Sif, Sif had, because Sif, of course, had the warlord's expansion, right? Sif yeah. War. So this is the latest yeah. one, which has the warlords and the um, Beyond the Sword expansion thingy mm -hmm. thingamajing yeah, that's that's why be, because you have beyond the sword that's why you have i think both cultural and diplomatic certainly diplomatic victory but yeah Could okay be. good 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 but he's leading yeah, our yeah, troops uh, um yeah man it's not good now that you've got that that's actually a pretty um i want them on uh, the night though the second expansion oh, pack oh okay yeah. Corporations is added. There you go. Espionage, random events, advanced starts, expanded diplomatic victory. Sorry about that. And an expanded space victory. So these per were already in the main game, apparently. All right. Um, talking about war. Talking about war. What is it good for? <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. And it's not good for, for, for anything. Um, <clears throat> but he does make but, a uh, point about it. Wait, does he? Uh, yeah, he says a relevant issue in page 38 at the bottom is whether these examples, these games, 
are appropriate for the entire student population. Oh, yes, yes. After all, computer games, particularly the war-related games I use, are primarily aimed at male players, so one can object against using these examples in a class where part of the students are female and are supposed to have little taste for computer games. In a parenthesis. I, I was a bit like... I, I, I love I loved the... I love the, 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 the pragmatic understanding and yeah. joined with so a bit of idealism. He's like, yeah, supposedly women don't like computer games. And he's like, I know that's not the case. There's, yeah. But he understands why it's also the case. Because, you know, yeah. the type of computer games that are mostly being played at that point in time are all war-related. I just appreciate also this guy's use of parentheses. As <laughs> because it's oh, something yeah, I yeah. like to do, but then people frown upon it but here yeah no parenthesis. He's, let's go i've this this is why i use em dashes because people frown less on em dashes <laughs> yeah it's true. <laughs> they still frown upon it but th they sort of let you get away with it because supposedly it's sophisticated warriors, first, and, <laughs> and that, that you know that that i say that between parentheses first, <laughs> but he continues win. the sad truth is that even though in parentheses again even though i have considered this issue before introducing the examples Mm -hmm. The question is an academic one, since the present computer technology student population in the Netherlands is predominantly male. Um, I was a bit confused here about what he meant with that this be, that this is an academic question. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what he means, but the fact of the matter remains. Uh, but he also says that the few female students I see in class never objected to these examples, and in fact were familiar with the games used. The Netherlands yeah, I, I think that's excellent. I think basically yeah. he's talking, he's saying, he's, nerds, the nerds, the nerds in my class don't object to the game. Yeah. No, I think, um, I think that it's a, it's a, I mean, that's why I really like this paper. It's like, yeah, that's, that's, that's just what this is about. Yeah. Um, he just, he just gets real. He gets real. So, well, I mean, the whole database example is, I think, interested, interesting. I've, mm -hmm thought about databases as well so I've, of i thought on databases as well and i just know it's very tough to to get people to wrap their heads around even a relational database yeah. um uh, so i just applaud the effort of saying like here's this chart now stick it into a database yeah <laughs> uh, i think it's a, it's a, it's a, I, I like the example of it i mean Honestly, I wouldn't do this with a game myself. I would just use something that is something more people will sort of have, have some sort of feeling with. But yeah. still, I like the hustle here. Um, I like the. It's it's always when when you know uh, section four military units and the ontological impact of Leonardo's workshop. It's it sounds so much more deep than it ends up being because oh, it's yeah. once again this this very pragmatic but it's so it's it's still deep right it's still, it's still yeah it, 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 this is also where, where computer science to me gets is both deep and also sort of very concerned with the pragmatics it yeah. is like oh yeah basically you get this thing and then all of a sudden you get lead orders like you have this class this this entity and all of a sudden you get this very specific entity called Leonardo's workshop and Leonardo's workshop just shows that of something that is a unit the unit entity the unit object within an object oriented programming um ontology so sort of view of what what your what your information system looks like and you all of a sudden get Leonardo's workshop and you understand that within every unit there is already the upgradable unit as an entity type and therefore it invalidates this whole I think it's just it's it's smart and it's it's also it it, it hinges on the philosophical let's put it put it like that it touches upon it yeah. um yeah section five is is in that sense um I think a bit more of the same <laughs> although interestingly here he moves into the movement and nap space <laughs> Just yeah. in a very pragmatic way as well. <clears throat> yeah, I think it was he had this interesting sentence where it's like, well, basically describing the whole thing. We're saying in this section will, however, be exploring not the world as represented on the map of Civilization Two, but the realm of all relevant topics, which can be illustrated by looking at units which are ordered to move around the map. And I thought this was also, it, it also hinges on the philosophical a bit as to how you understand like. 
the spatial relationship of things. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, not to put the final point to it, but a lot of this stuff that he's doing, this sort of very formalistic way of understanding civilization, is more or less also what I, what what uh, Corina, what Times New Romans yeah. uh, PhD is about as well, right? It's really about understanding these things and how they really intersect, right? All these little from 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 the mechanic from the mechanics of the game to these potentially much bigger concepts. In this case, the concepts just stick within computer science, but that's that's fine. Yeah, he had this interesting later on in page forty four. He talks about these the sequential like nature yeah. of the game where he says yeah civilization 2 is entirely sequential not only are the human player and the computer controlled civilizations completing their turn in a round robin order but within a turn the units are moved individually in the case mm -hmm. of a sequence of moves of a unit whose move allowance um which permits several steps this sequence of steps can be preempted in order to move another piece first and using this mechanism, an attack unit can escape from restrictions of the zone of control nature by being escorted by a diplomatic unit using zone of control, uh, which was just the example to, to illustrate yeah. this. But it was, a, I think the, the, all these like elements are the strictly game mechanics that if you want, you can give them like this, this philosophical element to it, of this, this analysis of it that can be more like a humanities related analysis but you need to understand how this thing works as well internally yeah you need to yeah, exactly you need to both understand how it works internally before i think before you can say anything deeper about it really yeah um <clears throat> and i think a lot of the times what these what the scholarship of civ and we are guilty of that as well mm -hmm. suffers from is that we don't exactly always co consider the mechanics the, the 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 actual game design and the way that this whole thing is bolted together yeah um because that is very much part of the model and then the question maybe becomes is this part of the sort of the rules of the computer game yeah. <clears throat> or is this part of the way that we understand an interesting gameable historical conflict to work yeah. and then it, it if you then start thinking exactly i think this was a good example of how you have to start thinking algorithmically like to call back uh, friedman again you have to understand this idea of these mo units are moving sequentially and this is of course basically what like what omar's doing right now yeah old school war gaming that's what it is yeah. right but then also he talks about it he does it he calls it atomic or something like that what does he call it again this moment at the end of your turn where basically everything happens at once yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, an atomic result during a future yes. turn he says yeah oh yeah exactly right <clears throat> yeah. that is that's a deeper insight as well that, that all of these sequential moves first of all have to get resolved at the end of the turn right and not well they get resolved in real time during your turn and at the end of your turn no. there are still things that just need to happen like you need to check if your bomber is in its in its uh yeah. proper spot um you need to check if you know um if you're not on somebody else's territory etc yeah. and all of that is happening and that is of course where the old school war game which is very much procedural step after step after step this procedural take on military battles really takes that extra computer driven yeah uh, element to it so i think that it, that's that is yeah. you can i think it's pretty deep specifically what you said like a lot of game scholars don't really bother looking at at, at that because it has interestingly it has two for me it has two um like it, 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 it creates two points of friction. One is often it will generate a situ an in-game situation where a scholar or a player, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. we're talking about scholars, will not understand, right? The the often often quoted game that Omar says. This right? game. <laughs> yeah, this there, game. There, there are elements that that you fail to to understand, but then this failure of understure by scholars often turns into interpretation and then because they yeah, fail and, understand, and often often more critique as well right? yeah and if you and and then it's just wrong 
because you didn't understand what happened. Yeah. And sometimes it can be right as well, but it's most more chance than actual like correct interpretation of of the system. Um, that is one thing, and the other thing that I think is interesting and that scholars and we also have not really considered is exactly what you're saying about checking, because these games have to like check, Jesus like constantly Christ, check the status of every object, right? Yes, yes. And, yeah, and this absolutely. is something that this is not happening in history. There is no internal mechanism that checks that you ended up, that the location that you ended up in is a location that you can actually exist in. No, right? we have physics for that. Yeah. yeah, we have physics for that. But it's interesting that this is, this is so important, but it's also something that just people altogether ignore yeah. as, as yeah. a constitutive element of the system. And for me, this was really the first time I got to wrap my head around this and this concept of constant checking because I'm not a programmer, right? Mm -hmm. but the first time I, I got to wrap my head around this is when I was trying to like, when I was doing, um, trying to get my rules advisor for Magic the Gathering. So like, oh, yeah. like a level one judge um, yeah. or a step below the level one judge anyway, a level zero judge or whatever, where mm -hmm. you have to understand what is a state-based action. Yes. And then yes. you have to to understand that in a game that does not have a computer behind it, if this game was a machine, it would constantly check everything. Yes. So yeah. as, as, a, as a rule interpreted, you have to think that every action needs to be checked at all times. And then yes. you have steps in the game and then you have like layers and all. But at the very root, there is something that's happening constantly like yes. constantly yeah. checking state-based actions constantly and yeah. and and you don't think about it but it's there um, yeah and no, i think it, it it should be it would be interesting to start pushing this into the analysis somehow yeah no for sure i think this is definitely part of the analysis uh, already a little bit for us right yeah um <clears throat> i mean oftentimes in previous series we focused a lot on the on the texts, quite literally, uh, the cephalopedia and uh, and also on the iconography and uh, and not to say that that's not correct, right? That's absolutely something you wanna uh, you want to. Uh, there you go, there you go, Omar. This is this is going the right way. Yeah. You wanna check? You wanna check the numbers, right? And 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 yeah. and um, in that sense, often so yes, yes, absolutely. We, the computer has been discussed as uh, by uh, we will get to him Galloway, yeah. um, but also by Friedman already, like as this as this algorithm driven thing, yeah. the algorithm. But it's not just that it's completely algorithmic; it's also continuously checking, right? Absolutely, yeah. that's it. It's not just it knows everything, <laughs> no. but it is also continuously checking everything. And in the case of civilization, it's actually not continuously checking everything because you know it it has these games these game states where things are just quiet, right? Yeah. Omar's not moving. And as soon as Omar clicks somewhere, then it starts checking something. Um, but yeah, absolutely right. And this also, this is not, this is that this is then the argument that Galloway will make, right? There's a lot of this stuff that means that therefore a game like Civilization has to be a certain way. It has to be a very much about these binaries. Now, I'm not sure if that's actually the, the, the case, but that's definitely something what we'll touch upon later as well. And in a way, this very pragmatic paper is just the, the, the precursor to understanding that more fully. And to me, all of that comes together in in in, in chapter of, in section six, almost like a whole book this, but um, in charting the tree of knowledge. And I think that is just so, it's such a, it's such an elegant little little exercise, like, hey, this this graph of the tree of knowledge that is in the booklet is actually wrong. It is yeah, also yeah, yeah. not. It is also not as informative as it should be. Yeah. So how about you design and then you get into the not hardcore, but you get into the somewhat more computer sciencey part of it. How about you design an algorithm that could sort this tree, right? Uh, yeah. And then it's it's a super easy problem to solve. Um, topological sort, which is applicable since the dependency relation structures the advances as a directed acyclic graph. 
And here you get you get such a, a wonderful statement after this. So this basically this is my jam because this is um, networks, <laughs> mm. right? Um, and directed acyclic graph is just a, a particular version of a network. To be very specific, it's a it's a tree, <laughs> right? It's a branching tree, not necessarily even branching, but it's um, basically it means that there is direction to the to the connections. Mm -hmm. in your network yeah. and your network can never loop back onto itself that's what the acyclic part means yeah. and it then he says it better be a dag i love the abbreviation there it better be a dag since otherwise the game becomes unplayable something to keep in mind when customizing the advances graph yeah. so i'm gonna wonk out a little bit here but that's that is the game of civilization at least in this case too becomes unplayable as soon as you would loop a technology back onto itself either directly or or, or through some other civilization yeah. uh, through some other technology something pretty good just happened all right cool uh before i start working out uh, because uh, i could are people still entertained in chat feel free to just like get in there and ask omar questions about what's going to happen just tell us no, no more of this, this wonking out about like algorithms paper, and graphs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fine, eh? fine. It's al always permissible to say, please stop. Something good just happened. What happened? Well, um, someone, not to be named Boudica, but these people, declared war on someone over here, maybe. Oh, excellent. Oh, oh excellent. Ex yeah. I mean, this is. I mean, I, this is why I do... Did you have a... You didn't ask Budika, right? I didn't see, straight up see you ask. No, they uh, were probably like, support. oh, they're getting their ass kicked. Um, they this probably is have the time no, to... We they, want in, basically. They probably have yeah, no yeah, yeah. troops around here now, mm. so... Um, because no, they're all I mean, here. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's great. Although, I think... Um, the, <laughs> Vienna or w w is up there, right? Or oh, Vienne? Or what yeah. is it? Oh, no, that's... Uh, that's sorry, number 17. That is... Uh, Oh, that's 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 the booty cast already. Yeah. Okay. No, I thought the number seventeen was one of the the best no, cities in the world. One sun. One no, sun. So I, okay. I basically want I want this one. So I want the capital, obviously. And I think you don't want one sun. You want this one. But we're no, now sorry. in a race against Budika to make <laughs> to Pyongyang, basically, right? Yeah, but then it can also yeah. just take Budika, right? I mean. <laughs> wow. Yeah, there you go. The I arrogance is kicking in. Omar. I unleashed something in Omar. Excellent. <laughs> excellent. Yes, excellent. I'm you very happy. Uh, I right. sometimes look in and out, so sometimes there's the thread of lecture, but it's interesting so far. Good, good to hear that. Feel free to like, a, if you were like, wait a minute, that sounds interesting, but I have not got a clue uh, if it actually is. Just tell us like, hey, can you repeat that? Or can you please yeah, tell yeah. me how you arrived there? Well, this is not like a classroom, it, but we're we're very I mean, happy to... It happens to, in the classroom as well. But it also have like, yes. Can you repeat this? Yeah, absolutely. We're more than happy to to re to not just have this discussion with the two of us. Yeah. Although, I think we're by now already proving that, that we can have this discussion among the two of us pretty well as well, uh, right, Iris? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, back to wonking out about directed acyc acyclic graphs. Yeah, go ahead. It is, it is very interesting because it is also, I think, not entirely true for Civilization Four. Because at a certain point, yeah, they're all coming from him now. <laughs> oh jeez, oh jeez. What um, have you? What have you done? Oh, Ragnar. Oh, nice, nice. Oh, this is good, Omar. This is good stuff. This is what this game needed. Just, just a bit of dusting, the, kicking yeah, up yeah. the dust. But look at this hey, massive you... doom stack in Seoul. Excellent, man. Excellent. I'm loving the action. By the way, if you just just joined. Um, this is Omar playing Civilization 4. Ask him anything about Civilization 4 because he knows everything about it. Um, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, this is the game that he started with originally uh, playing Civilization. This is where and it all went if wrong. You, if you have great strategy, strategic tips for him, go. But otherwise, Omar's just very much focused on pounding Korea into the ground. And uh, Aris and I, we're um, deep into discussing some scholarship. So some people who have written professionally, academically, professionally about civilization. If that bores the crap out of you, just turn off the sound and just watch the action unfolding on the screen. 
Or, hey, join in. Um, if you want to, uh, you can actually find the papers we're discussing, if you're so inclined, in our Discord. Oh, yeah. All right, cool. Um, so, back, back to... Uh, so, I think there's, from our point of view at least, there's this point where you can go for advanced technology, right? All the way at the end of the game. So, technically speaking... From our point of view, that would be um, a loop, a graph that loops back on itself because we don't honestly don't really care because it's the same. It, we actually you see it as, as as the same type of tech that is just looping back onto itself. But this is a good good thing for for the computer. This is actually a different node in the technology network all along, right? Yeah. It is actually a, a, it is genuinely a new tech for the computer. It just doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. But that's I'm inclined to believe him that actually civilization 4 would break if you would loop back in the technology tree so and that's cool right because that's also what we're talking about when we say hey you actually can't kind of stuck yeah. uh, it's, it, cannot... it, it's like the, the the algorithmic effect i don't know if algorithmic is the correct word of like yeah, 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 a, yeah. a linear history right you can never yeah. reinvent the wheel quite mm. literally it's it, if you reinvent the wheel the game breaks Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. This is it. The game breaks if you reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Now, um, on a, on a, and that's of course an interesting thing. You can reinvent in civilization. You can reinvent the wheel many times. In fact, you have to invent it or otherwise get it many times. Yeah. Because every civilization has to invent the wheel. Yeah. Um, uh, or at least if you want to have any chance of actually making it to some sort of a mid game or end game. Or early game, for that matter, if you don't invent the way. <laughs> or early game, yeah, for sure. Um, but I think that's that's it. So this is exactly where it gets. Like, if you start to analyze what the game is actually doing, this is what it's doing algorithmically as a network algorithm or as a network structure. Um, and not an algorithm, not a network algorithm, but a network structure. Um, and, yeah, if you want to understand it, you, you best, you just need to have... It's also interesting because it's both if you want to view it in the nicest way possible you have this very uh polynomial uh so basically computer intensive easy solution topological sort but then if you want to get it to its actually best state uh. it is an np hard pro it all of a sudden becomes an np hard problem so meaning it's very this is layman's terms it's very computationally intensive yeah um or in fact, not even intensive. It's basically not solvable in or not mm -hmm. not solvable, but uh, but um, because uh, but not not easily solvable in polynomial time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good. it's it's excellent. I think it's it's really yeah, really cool uh, cool way of looking at the civilization. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, for the rest, <laughs> I like the fact that uh, there's a psych out. Uh, at the end, historical information. Yeah. He's like, yeah, well, is he now going to talk, <laughs> um, talk about his history? But yeah. no. No. Um, I think it was interesting um, in the in the very end of Beyond Computer Games. Yes, he talked about magic, huh? Yeah, so he says... He talked about Warhammer. Yeah, first of all, yeah. So yeah. Not, not exactly about magic, so just... Warhammer, but he says mm, he, talks, he talks about magic as well here yeah he says i'm sorry to state that so far our experience has shown that our freshman students even though we told them not to get themselves involved with the rules involving magic a lore far too advanced for the level of wisdom which i thought of this was brilliant brilliant fun yes very good very good we're clever enough to retrieve nice uh nice i don't know pictures i, I think nice. nice i think nice yes yeah, i think nice, nice. yes nice from the Games Workshop website to illustrate their solutions, but found it very hard to come up with a correct information model for this rather complicated game. In the answers return, one will find mistakes like confusing attributes and attribute values, which shows that it represents a truly challenging example. But I yeah. thought it was interesting how students in this particular case try to compensate with aesthetics. Like, here, look at the pretty pictures. Yes. The model doesn't work, but we have pretty pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very, very no, and, 
close. And, and and this is this is I think what is the the brilliance of good game designers like Sid Meier, right? We sometimes yeah. talk a bit of crap. <laughs> you love yeah. Warhammer. There you go. Yeah. I mean Warhammer or, or the people behind uh, the Warhammer rules. Yeah. These are extremely difficult for the human mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Oh, the Space Marine Titus. Yes, I have seen. I have seen it. Yes, I actually have seen it. <laughs> Aside from being massive, these are extremely difficult games to wrap your head around. If you have to sort of categorize it all, if you have to map out the information system. Yeah. And then so, these people still come up with these games, right? Yeah. And this is to me where I, because I'm not a game designer, right? Mm-hmm. But. Hey, these people. Hey, there it is. There it is. These people don't hand. like Sid Meier. I think he has a model in his mind, but not anything like a complete information model of no. something like Sid, of like Sid Meier's civilization, right? I think it's really like putting systems together to see what works. Yeah. And that's. I think that's that's that's. I mean, it's amazing, man. People that make games yeah. like this. Let's let's be very real about it. It's. Yeah. It's such a complex task. Mm. <laughs> Playing it is already pretty complex, let alone actually making it. I mean, there's a different level of complexity, and I think that's what yeah. is in, being hinted at here, because there, actually making this sometimes do not, does not require this level of like modeling, because you, yeah. you you make separate systems that you then sort of mash together is the wrong word. But I think Magic is a better example of this because it's a card game and, and not a, a computer game. And it also goes to show how even like Magic Online, but also now Magic Arena, constantly have bugs, like constantly yeah. non-stop have bugs because there are so many things that you need to model to make this thing work that you will miss yeah. something out and in a physical version of the game it's easier to deal with it in a digital version where the computer actually does the checking things break which you don't realize when you play it physically and this to me also i mean we're wonking out like crazy here but this to me also is why i still have hopes <laughs> for our human minds vis-a-vis the ai right yeah. Um, not that at some point this is not a, a challenge that will be conquered, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but like you, as your level zero magic judge, yeah. were was doing stuff that, I mean, maybe you were not doing it in an infallible way, right? Maybe you were also running into bugs and people just didn't notice. Mm-hmm. That's. But I'm going to say that, you know, knowing not as much as about actually being an arbiter on these games, but knowing a tiny bit about it, but you know that... You don't make that many mistakes when you're educating stuff, right? You don't. There's not a bug as much as, as there would be in the computer. Yeah, exactly. So, so somehow you have this information system. You have the full space of this game in your head. Yeah. Better than um, than a computer in a in a more efficient way than a computer would, right? In terms of learning, in terms of in energy invested currently, at least. I had to explain to once that there are no good guys in Warhammer 40k and that the human factions are the worst. Yeah, <laughs> this is this. Okay, I will I will come clean here. For me, Warhammer 40k is just too grim, man. It's it is just too grim. Too, it is just too grim. I could I could hack it with Warhammer because I think like I mean fantasy uh, old 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 world Warhammer yeah. because it it was sort of hidden. The grimness was hidden under. Yeah, this is just fantasy plus, history plus just a, a good bit of fantasy. But my God, it's too grim. It's too grim for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but at the very end, he also says, "Also, the ship." I think that's the last bit to discuss for me. Mm. But also, it's something that I have experienced a lot in archaeology. It says also the reception amongst the students in business-oriented computer science is quite mixed. Part of the students expect a curriculum primarily aimed at management sciences and they often fail to see the relevance of detail looking at games for modeling purposes. For the more technically oriented students in the same program, this is not a problem. And this is something that has occurred many times in archaeology when I try to teach things through games, where people will say, I'm not here to learn about games, I'm here to learn about archaeology and you're not teaching me archaeology here. But 
and then they fail to see the relevance of looking at games. Well, for modeling history in this particular case. Which is, which is, I think, I think fair, depending on depending on what you actually are in into archaeology for, yeah, or into any sort of study for, right? Yeah. If you're really into a study area for this, this, this man, this this particular nugget of a discussion could we could balloon it probably to a whole streaming series. Yeah. Um, but but if you're if you're if you're really into archaeology, say for the lab coat stuff. Yeah. Or if you're really into archaeology because you just want to dig. <laughs> or if you're really into archaeology because you really like pots or whatever, right? Yeah. Then, yeah, no, doing a game will just distract you from, 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 from what you really want to do. However, I think as soon as you're interested in archaeology or any other field of science as a both human and scholarly endeavor, I think playing around with it will already help you a lot. I think the, the answer to this, for me at least, is a bit... And sometimes it will still not work. But one thing that these students... It's not that the students fail to see the relevance. No, yeah. But it's more that they fail to understand the purpose of the exercise, in a way. Yeah. Because, or it's the failure of the teacher to explain the exercise. Yeah, right, right? whatever. It's, it's, it, it can be both. But it's more about, clearly, this has relevance and it has been demonstrated. Mm -hmm. And it's about being able to understand what that particular, like what the purpose of the exercise is. And I find this not only with games, just across the board exercises. If people don't understand why they're doing an exercise, then the, the exercise is tedious, right? Yeah, um, I, sometimes it's fun even if you don't get it, but it's always yeah. You could you could also it. you could also just just have fun with the exercise, yeah. right? And uh, that is also an, a, a, a genuine possibility. Yeah, and that is simply also because people are not really trained to think too laterally about exercises yeah. <laughs> in in educational systems. Yeah. They're just like, oh, okay, you know, um, this is where I just have to show the teacher what I know. <laughs> Yeah, and that is hardly ever the um, the point of a of of a game based exercise or any other type of yeah. more creative exercise. <laughs> um, that's that's not really it. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. This is, uh, but I think this is a topic we should pick up at some other point, especially when you're teaching soon that uh, past that play archaeology course. Yeah. Did you, by the way, just change your uh, Twitch icon, Felix Nick? I I think you did. Excellent. <laughs> Super Ultra Combo 2023, let's go. Nice. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, also, I want to know that if you had to pick the goodest guys in Warhammer 40k, which faction that would be? Uh, clearly not the clearly not the humans. No, but we're talking the least were the least bad the least, from a moral point bad. of view. Yeah. And then I also want to know what armies you're playing, or if you're playing any armies, or if you're not playing any armies, what you would play. Uh, if you if you were, I guess you are playing. Can we um, s close the book on this? I yeah, think let's, let's diverting it. paper. Um, diverting isn't fun, and also diverting oh, wow. from what? What? Wow! Uh, there, there was a city here. Oh, did they just raise it? I think they did. Oh wow! <laughs> Budika just raised it. I mean, okay, well, let's talk a little, tiny little moment about this. I think that Boudicca just raised it, and this is really where you get this. In, in civilizations, you really get the, this. It is this these horde-type AI, right? Yeah. Um, which means um, in civilization one, two, three, and I think it's four as well, the Zulu, um, uh, the Mongols, right? Uh, and then Boudicca. And I guess there's some more in Civilization IV. I, I really feel that they're really... They're, they're selling these... Not that I'm sorry, like, oh, that's great. These, the Mongols were great. They're like, let's all let's all laud the Mongols for the good stuff that they did for the world. Not a, really about that. But they're really selling them so short. Like, like this is just... Because there, it's just such a, a, 
a stupid decision in civilization to raise a city. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, it just makes no sense if there's a city there. It makes I no mean, sense. It, but it, I, it, it, then it is about the model again, right? The fact that you yeah. incorporate models, th this kind of element into your model, which is not necessarily... That's that's the interesting like interpre interpretative element that you need to create a model where not every like actor within that model because they, they like they have agency over their choices and uh, mm -hmm. not every actor will act in the way that would always be the most beneficial to it but it has to follow like its own attribute yeah, I know, but I really feel that um, that okay, they're they're really tying into the tropiest thing that these quote unquote horde civilizations uh, could do. Yeah, right. Because more or less, we are now playing. Uh, we're playing Charlemagne, but we are more more or less doing the horde civilization style kind of thing. We're just you know going there and just breaking these cities, just yeah. grinding them down. And there are not, you you maybe know better than I, but there's not that many examples of of complete cities being raised to the ground um, not that many. altogether, right? Really not that many. <clears throat> no, fortunately, by the way. But, um, um, it, it's Even the in... examples that we have are like, in the, that's the, an interesting thing as well, which is not necessarily represented in 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 series, that when this was used, when like cities were being raised to the ground, they were being raised to the ground usually in order to not have every other city that you're conquering being raised to the ground, right? It had yeah. a there was yeah. some kind of benefit, a, or a, sacri a sacrifice, yeah, presumed yeah. benefit to it. Like we are gonna like at the Athenians kill everybody in Milos to make sure that they don't ever have to go and, and fight, like that all of their allies will comply. The Assyrians would raise certain cities to make sure that no other city would object and then they would have to do more sieges that they could have, that they, that they wanted or that they could make. Uh, which is not something that we see here, because if you raise a city in civilization, it's not like the other city is going to be like, oh my god, you raised my city. No, they lose it either way, off. right? They're gonna be pissed off with you. They're like, "What did you just do?" And we're gonna f we're gonna fight you to the end. <laughs> yeah, but they're gonna um, fight you even if you don't raise the city to the ground. Yeah, not necessarily. They will probably um, other civilizations will fight you even more if you, if you raise the city to. Yeah. What? The One turn of anarchy. <laughs> what happened? Anarchy. Let's go. Anarchy. <laughs> We've made peace with what? What? Oh, you made peace because you uh, you are now a an anarchy. Oh, that's hey, a thing. Alfred. That's hey, a thing, really? Uh, yeah, winning gamers. We were winning. Uh, Ukraine actually is considering not rebuilding some erased small towns and villages. Yeah, my point was uh, going to be also that I think the raising of towns and villages probably happens much more in the 20th and 21st century, yeah. sadly, I would say, than it really ever was like a, a viable strategy for these these Good historical empires. Mm -hmm. Good I mean, this, is, this, is not <laughs> really, this is not really true because a lot of the cities in the past would be made because now yes you can bomb a city so you can literally raise a city to the ground but yeah. then in the past you also had like cities were were much more fragile so setting a city ablaze would have the same effect, right? So cities could be yeah. raised to the ground in a way that... It was similar in a way. Of course, cities had s smaller populations, um, but it would have a similar effect. I want to I wanted to briefly get back to Felix, who said, years ago, when I thought precocious NYC high school students, there were always two minds of video games. Either it's just for fun, nothing coming out of it with no real-world application, or the total opposite. I also thought during the transition from traditional classroom to smart parts, smart boards. <laughs> yes, yeah, that that has been. My mom was also teaching at high school, but uh, primary school when when that happens, she was not happy about that. But yeah, right. Or the total oh. opposite. Now I've also declared war. Oh, I should have checked that before. Shit. <laughs> I also have declared war on Budica now. 
Uh, oh, because they were in an alliance all of a sudden? Uh, apparently. Oh, and oops. they're pretty fucking strong. I mean, you, you uh, can... you can Later, you... Because Boudicca doesn't easily get to you, right? So... Uh, I mean, they're allies with these dudes. Yeah, but they still need to cross all that territory. So... And then Felix also says, I would use Tyranid's least evil faction. It looks the most evil, but I can't say no to a massive space marine or grey knights. There you go. <laughs> I can't agree, by no. the way, that the Tyranids, because as, as also a StarCraft Z player, I always had a particular taste for the Tyranids in Warhammer, even if I never like really played Warhammer. I always mm -hmm. thought Tyranids were... I mean, you you have like what is the other guys, the Tau Empire? If you want to, sorry, go I'm I'm load. I'm I'm gonna reload a little bit. <laughs> you go okay, ahead and save sure. scum. Yeah, yeah, yeah save yeah, scumming is fine. a thing. Uh, yeah, no, I think this is this is permitted because this was yeah. it's one of those things that the game doesn't really tell you. You're like, oh, you're now an anarchy, so you can't have war. Yeah. I mean, so I guess I was, you would, Where you would, you would. I, 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 I would, I, I would, you... I would applaud this. You have anarchy, so you can't have war. I, I yes. applaud the game, the, the mechanic of the game. But <laughs> if I can actually <laughs> find the saves, I don't know if you have any saves. Should have. It auto saves, no? Yeah, but they're not. Yeah. They should so... be here, but they're not. <laughs> Uh, that that that's uh, you know there you go single. There's yeah, that, that's those the saves, saves I made by hand. Yeah, I don't think you're auto saving, my friend. Well, I was <laughs> apparently, but also my other auto saves are gone. Apparently, how can they be gone? Oh, oh, the plot has just thickened. Like if you exit the game now. Can't you reload? Can't you then? Wait, wait, before you do that, make a manual save. Make a, make a manual save and then exit and check if you can find like quick saves <laughs> from the load load menu, you know? You know what I'm saying? I think. I think there are. They should be here. Mm, no, I mean, they were certainly would be under single, I think. Uh, auto, here, here we go. There should be a. Um, Ah, yeah. There we go. There we go. Folders, folks. Folders. This is a uh, the long this lost arc. Before of my time. Um, <laughs> I need to is, go. Oh my uh, god! Don't get me. Don't get me started. Don't get me started on 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 folder Ready. structures and and the students of today. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I need yeah, to. I agree. Tyranids, I think, are the the the, the least bad. I think that you you can make a, a weird argument for the Tau Empire being. Sort of. AI, AI is without value. Yes, sure. <laughs> AI is just just doing what it does, right? The, the Tau are, or unless I'm mistaken, the Tau are the, the 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 basically the robots, right? Yeah, they are the robot yeah. faction. Yeah. Uh, oh no, wait, they're not a robot faction, right? The Tau are like this this blue dudes or not? Am I confused? No, the Tau I... are this this this. They have these exoskeletons, but uh, yeah, okay. I mean, sorry, from I'm just for me, they're robots basically. Yeah. Maybe I'm, yeah. but they they because they have this thing where they're like, We're not conquer gonna conquer you if you want to join us, and then and then if you say yes, then they are very happy and jolly about it. Oh, that's that's true. That's how <laughs> they're hegemony, basically. There, and that that's yeah. not that's that that's somewhat less evil than just destroying you by force. So okay, I like I like. I also yes. choose to believe that the Tyranids are like refugees in reality, and and everybody's being racist against them. Sure, man. If that that's the lore that works for you, I choose to well, believe because nobody which, knows where they came from, right? So you can think that, whatever the fuck you want. Ask that. Yes, for sure. If you say no to the Tau, you get a shotgun, get a to, shotgun the to the face, if I recall. Yes, yeah. but they are asking. They're asking. <laughs> In contrast to the Space Marines, who are just yeah. not asking. They're just, you know, they shoot destroying first. you. <laughs> the, the, the Tau will shoot second. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, uh, that is preferable. <laughs> In In a very weird preferable situation, but it is preferable. All right. All right, next article. You know what also is preferable? What? Archaeology and games. Archaeology and games, let's go. 
<coughs> oh, sorry, interactive entertainment. Ah, I know what happened. I... What happened? I think um, Burika became the vessel, va vessel of um, Moncom. I think. Of Machke de Gaulle. No, of oh. Korea. Uh, how do you check? What? How did they become vesselized? Because well, you, they you, were. You, you, did, you can just like say. Do you want to become a vessel? Yes, thank you. And that's but why they, they made like peace. At war. I I know. <laughs> and they cannot you have been winning exactly. You can yeah, but like Burka is their overlord, so to say. Oh, oh the Koreans the yeah. battles to the Yeah man, then you just have to go for it. Yeah, you um, know. Omar, yeah, Omar I can't Lemain. take them I can't take them both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but can. I can't. Look look at the power. Look at her power. I'm here and I'm here <laughs> they're here uh, I mean um, yeah now it's her power because now she's added one con, one con to no, no. <laughs> well, no that's that on her own <laughs> yeah I mean um, I mean, guess that's, that throws a spanner in those works uh, well, but, we're uh, committed now well, let's so. take over as many cities as we can and then call it a day and if yeah, man. we call it a day now, then we call it a day now. We've no, I, I would not call it a day all... because I think I think you've gotten a lot out of this already. You've already gotten a lot out of it, yeah. But I would go I would go go for Seoul. You need to go for Seoul. I think you can do it. I believe in you. Just yeah, we're just gonna bombard the shit out of it. Yeah, and after that you say thanks. Also, find find some allies, my friend. You can find some allies yourself that can go annoy them. Yeah. yeah but then you need to do diplomacy. Yeah, you need to do diplomacy, my friend. You've got to play the game. <laughs> what does Rome have to offer? Well, um, a pope? <laughs> How about um, you're pleased with me? Do you want to... Do you wanna be yes. friends? Yes. You know? Do you wanna be friends? You cannot. But you wanna trade liberalism yeah. for the constitution? No. He's he's pleased with you, but not that pleased. No gold, just music. I don't want your <laughs> fucking world map. He has no gold though, so. Oh, we, so we can't ask for gold. This, this is not. This is not worth it. No. It's also, because he's your main rival. Huh? <laughs> you get a, mm -hmm. Sometimes you gotta make peace with your opponent, you know. Sometimes you just gotta. I mean, you can do this, Omar. I, f I, you can really do this. I believe in you. You can take seal, take seal. Just gonna have a quick, a small little check on how I can't, I cannot. Well, Omar's having a small little check. Let's talk about interactive entertainment as public archaeology. Yeah. So what I really do like about this is that clearly Ethan Wattrell was not allowed to say video games. No. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> told him, what if you just make it, you know, interactive it, entertainment? It sounds interactive more like entertainment. It sounds yeah, exactly. We 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 have TV shows that's entertainment, but yeah. and then we just make it interactive, right? So Aris, tell us about what Ethan Wattrell, uh, this paper. Tell yeah. us about. Tell us all about it. So basically, this paper is most of the arcade gaming papers that followed in a nutshell. In a way, I, reading it had the similar effect to me as we had when we were reading, uh, um, I forgot her name now, uh, last week. Laura, where, Laura Donaldson. Laura, yeah. There were a lot of points that a lot of people made much later. Yeah. Um, already in there. I don't yeah. think it's exactly comparable in the sense that here they are being made at a very early point. I um, to, to be clear, the earliest 
paper written by an archaeologist, as far as yeah, we know, as far as we um, know. about games. Yeah. Except for the fact that he references, and we can talk about this later, Fugawi Land. Yeah. But that's 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 for later. That is indeed for later. Um, and so it it was interesting to see how a lot of these ideas about hey, archaeologists are not looking at games, but games mm -hmm. are impactful. Hey, they are the fastest growing medium. You should be looking at it. Hey, interactivity can play a role in education. Um, the industry, the gaming industry, is taking ownership of the telling of history, and we should be like intervening, and we should also have a voice. Um, yeah. And look at these Which games. Was they was much problems. more feasible back in 2002 when this paper yeah. was written, or yeah. maybe even 2000 or whatever when it was written. 2000. Yeah. Yeah, but I guess it was written. Yeah. Um, but b there are a lot of points that we can, like, that we also have written exactly the same points, right? Just like, later. <laughs> just later. And with bigger numbers. They still numbers. need to be said, yeah, for sure. And and even now, I I mean, now we have a field of our gaming, right? So if somebody would want to write a paper like this, you can easily say, hey, there are these other 10, 15 papers that have said the same thing. I'm not even sure if they are 10, 15, these papers in, arcade, in the arcade gaming field no. uh, that would make these arguments, which also goes to show that even now after, and we, a paper is coming out in literally two days where we make these arguments again. Um, yes. It goes to yeah. show that after 10 years or more of having a field dedicated whole, to the study of archaeology and video games, and these points still need to be made. Yeah. It's still yeah. made 20 years later and 10 years later and probably in 10 years down the line if we like if we do not make them a bit more convincing. Yeah. Uh, so it was a good article to read and also a bit of a sad reflection on there is still a lot of work to be done. Yeah, right. And it, it also is, I think, a good example of how archaeologists have always made not always but many of them make a make, make a fatal flaw in the beginning mm. and that is to look for the archaeology in games or the archaeologist in games yeah. and um this is also what this paper is doing and it's a, a fatal flaw in the sense of well then you're going to end up with these very limited range of um of, of games that you can look at Civilization being obviously still one of them, but you know, um, if you think, if you rather say, look at games archaeologically, right? If that would have, and that is something, of course, that we're still pushing nowadays, because that gets you away from the is it accurate? Uh, what is the archaeologist even doing in here? It becomes not a navel gazing, but it becomes this. Uh, you know, we have this very valuable perspective as archaeology that we can take into the study of more or less any phenomena. Uh, well, not not any phenomena. That's a bit of a hyperbolic statement. <laughs> but any human phenomena. Let's not call it the human phenomena, at least, right? Yeah. Um, so that I think for me is a um, that, that that is already in there. Right? He's talking about here. Um, hunched over a monitor and joysting in the basement, happily vaporizing denizens from the underworld in such popular titles as Quake, Quake 3 or Unreal. Yeah. Right? However, it is important that archaeologists recognize that the interactive entertainment industry produces far more than violent Twitch games targeted at pubescent boys. Well, I think that is just a, a, a misunderstanding of the fact that you can also study mm. Quake 3 or Unreal with an archaeological mindset. And that would have been, yeah. I think, uh, maybe even as interesting as sort of saying like, oh, let's let's look at the the, the, the stuff that is not for pubescent boys, right? I think that's that was an early and no still oftentimes made mistake. Yeah. Um, we say, well, no, we <laughs> study civilization, but uh, yeah. and not doom or quake through. That's okay. Let's switch it. Omar, start quake three, please. Let's go. Wait, what? Eh? <laughs> Greg, what? Greg, what now? Was That's it, was it before I was born or after? Uh, oh, Quake wow. Three is 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 uh, is after you were born, my friend. I think it's after, right? You, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Quake Three for sure, for sure is after. Unreal yeah. also after. Um, oh, so much, so much time spent playing Unreal. 
so much time. <laughs> are you talking Unreal Tournament or are you talking Unreal yeah. Unreal? Yeah, Unreal Tournament. Oh yes, Unreal Tournament. My god, what a... I mean, so, so man, like... let's do it for a moment. Like, Unreal Tournament. Like, thinking about the history of that world, that it's sort of the world building that was done through these levels. Yeah. Right, there, there was a lore to this game, right? Uh -huh. it, and it, and there was there was there was a, a human architecture that was grounded in some form of uh -huh. understanding of actual human architectures in there as well. I think it would have made it for a fascinating, fascinating paper if you were going to go. And Unreal, for sure, yeah. was about uh, uh, about the human in 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 you know uh, non-human spaces. It, well, it was about the Unreal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, anyway, whatever. Let's not do that. Yes. I wanna. I, I just wanted to say, and at some point, I guess we're gonna talk about it more extensively. Mm. I went on the internet after reading this and was like, "Yes, it is time that I buy Adventures in Fugawi Land." I don't know if it will come with a CD-ROM. I don't think so, sadly. Uh, but uh, that book is coming, coming to uh, coming to Leiden soon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we're gonna dive into it. Anything in particular that you want to um, pick up here, except for the fact that, well, um, later when we'll talk about more archaeology uh, scholarship around this, yeah, we'll do it again. My, my point. Um, I have so many highlighted things on this paper. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> so at some point early on in page 37, he says, uh, in recent year increasingly widespread use of advanced personal computing blah 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 however the focus on peer-to-peer -peer communication and university-based corpware has remained quite entrenched archaeologists rarely ever consider exclusively targeting their interactive media towards the commercial market this is ironic because when it comes to public education the average undergraduate who enrolls in an anthropology course is relatively speaking one of the last people in need of outreach which <laughs> I thought that was interesting. I tend to agree, not not like completely, but uh, there is a lot of truth, I think, both to the fact that, well, archaeologists will never mm -hmm. think of targeting the commercial market. Yeah. And there is in, indeed, and this is still true, there is, and I actually had um, a student do a thesis about this mm -hmm. for Instagram, where what she, what she, uh, wanted to look at is how do universities and, and like archaeology departments mm -hmm. use Instagram to yeah. communicate uh, knowledge about the past and who are they trying to target and yeah. what came out of it is that they are actually very rarely try to communicate knowledge about the past to a wider audience they are trying yeah. to target either prospective or existing students so we pre like preaching a lot of the choir, basically. Um, hey, I think we have a paper about it upcoming in two days. We, yes, we, we have a paper about this coming in two days. Uh, also about this. It's a long paper. It's a long paper. Yes. Um, but I, it was interesting that he made that point already in 2002. Uh, yeah, when no, it is. there was such a limited like interactive media yeah. production. Uh, and this is, remains true today where we have basically limitless potential of what to make in terms of communication and still we are as you yeah. said we are naval gazing yes we are naval gazing i think there's part of that is smart right because part of that if you're doing this what you want is uh, if you're talking about instagram right you want you want you want the likes you want the people you want the engagements yeah now if you're gonna sort of shout into the commercial void right that that's not gonna get you that right so that is the real problem that that nobody really sort of thinks like i actually want to reach this group of people up. yeah exactly <laughs> Oof, i mean I see what you... as, as a commercial void and that's the problem because it's, it's yes. not a void right you, you can it is not a void but that's of course what it i mean this is what it looks like like Archaeologists and people in their communication department at, at, at universities, they're not PR people, right? They are oftentimes people that if they've, they've oftentimes don't have any formal training in communication studies or in PR, right? They just sort of 
not and there's not trying to slag on them like oh they're not, they're not professionals because they are professionals yeah. in being a communication professional at a university which has this very specific thing of targeting ex absolutely as you say prospective students and impressing uh the, the scholars around <laughs> around you with your with your cool stuff yeah. right um yeah, as I said, uh, we have this, I think, not as extensively discussed as this, but we have this in our upcoming paper as well, yeah. like the, the, the shareware model of, um, of, uh, of, of Archeo Gaming. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, yeah, it, it says here, anyone even remotely concerned with public education, as all archaeologists ought to be, will, yeah. be, will immediately recognize the impact that this single title has for Lara Croft in this case. This yeah. But, uh, yeah. I yeah, cannot win. And, and it's it's n never no way. No way. Look at the fucking doom stacks. Oh wow. I mean, they're doomy. Yes. Yeah. And I forgot how <laughs> fucking shit the uh, the UI and control <laughs> this Omar's, game is. Homer's Homer's level of curse cursing is is going up as as. Uh, I mean, this is a yeah. this game moment. Yes, clearly this is a this game moment, yes. I mean, uh, it's up to you, Omar, but I think that if you don't push on through right now... There's no way. Literally, my army will be gone uh, in two turns, maybe. Okay. Well, I mean, it's already then... gone. There's no way to stop it now, because it's... Because the action is just a couple of cannons. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. feel free to reload and then stop the war and yeah i think if that's better if you just want to sort of yeah let's reload man because the last thing i that cannot i need to, to like i needs to finish <laughs> yeah it needs to well talking about those consecutive turns right <laughs> i think this is one of those times when you're like uh, uh don't please don't reload to sort of um uh, go in with your doomstick to try and hit them yeah. the, the random number generator as i've been guilty of a lot in the past when it comes to Civ games um wow okay i see what you mean here damn man i forgot this also part of civilization basically yeah rolling <laughs> i think the rng sometimes is so effed yeah, up yeah it's 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 effed up as well i forgot i f i mean i i didn't forget about the doom stack of course like no that was a real thing but i forgot God, how long it then took this this frigging takes a long time wow i mean you can you can't turn on quick combat right so you can yeah but but yeah okay sure we we now we're almost sort of stuck in this holding pattern of absolute like doom. literally you can't even escape out of this you cannot <laughs> right now we cannot escape out of it i know <laughs> Oh, yeah. and oh, yes, and this. Oh, it just yeah. grinds your gears. <laughs> Except when we do it, uh, maybe, maybe to toot our horn, to our own value horn. <laughs> it just keeps on going. <laughs> do you, yeah. This is some riveting action, right, chat? It's like, this is where you come action. for. <laughs> this is where you come for. <laughs> Can you zoom in a bit more, Omar? Uh, no. <laughs> this is. <laughs> this you is don't it. Do it. No, I literally cannot. It's. Oh, I thought you I could. Can, oh, no, of course, no. it sort of it sort of auto zooms in now and again for these battles. Oh wow! <laughs> it's still going. Oh wow! Oh my god! I mean, god. excellent, right? Excellent. This is excellent stuff. This is this is why you have to replay these games. <gasps> your your army's still not gone, is it? I mean, you it, is now. <laughs> it is now. It is now. I mean, finally. I have to say, man. It, it, you, you destroyed so many of his units. I think, talking about RNG, I think you should not be too upset about the RNG, uh, RNGs is um, helping you out. <clears throat> so much okay. of his unit. I mean, the chat cannot see it, but... Uh, yeah. I'm going to reload. <laughs> yeah, you do that. Sure, Omar. You go for it. Um, you want to get back into uh, Ethan Wattrell's paper, Aris, or... Um, there are a couple more things maybe that we could discuss if we want to, although some of them will be discussed in the later paper as well. Yeah. I think one thing at the end, because as we said, a lot of this stuff have been said again, and we're going to say them soon again. 
There are again some stuff about games not being taken seriously because they are considered childish pastime and stuff like that. Uh, there was an, one interesting point in page 38 where he was describing civilization, where he said the player starts the game as a Neolithic chieftain, which I don't think this has ever been something that is said in civilization games. I don't think you're ever called a, a Neolithic chieftain, but I think this is to sort of get a no. to understand what you mean. Yeah, chieftain is a uh, yeah yeah for sure. Chieftain is of course a difficulty level, but uh, yeah. it's not you. You're never called the chieftain, I think. Or or Neolithic for that matter. I don't think. No, right? Neolithic clearly not. I think maybe no, not even in Civ One. I think you're being called the chieftain, even though you're no. li literally living in a cave then instead of a palace. Yeah. Or in That's right, that one and two. That he used that particular terminology. What I also think is interesting is that you're uh, he's basically giving this. One thing that I have already started to appreciate again is how tough it is to give a description of what civilization is in like a couple of sentences. <laughs> yeah, because this paper is like barely three pages long, right? This this yeah. expression struggled. Um, yeah. And there is one very last bit that I wanted to discuss briefly at the last paragraph where he says, in terms of what we need, he says, more specifically, however, there needs to be a new breed of public archaeologists who take an active participatory role as consultants, developers, and writers in the interactive ent entertainment industry. This is something that 20 years later we can, with absolute certainty, say that has not happened. No. Uh, and that as the industry stands, it looks nearly impossible <laughs> uh, yeah. to happen. Yeah. It also is something that we at least are actively like trying to train students for and you even more uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, with with all the stuff that are being developed here mm -hmm. but one thing i mean i understand that this is uh, paper targeted to archaeologists but one thing that is lacking here is the reflection to the some reflection towards the industry because yeah. this is However, we, we have also made that argument in our presentations and lectures yeah. and talks and whatever, where we say to people, you need to go out there, you, you are archaeologists, you need to go and talk to the developers, the developers will never come to us. But it is a reality that you need to understand that making better games, more historically informed games, it's not solely dependent on what archaeologists want. The, there yeah. needs to be will from the industry and we can we are not doing enough, but we can only do so much as well when we make reach a point where we're doing enough, you know? Yeah, no, I think... I think also, uh, let's be clear, there have been quite a couple of archaeology students that are, have made it into the game industry, right? Yeah. Um, but not just as archaeologists, right? So I, I actually do think it is germane. I mean, I don't think that if you want to make it into the gaming industry, it's first studying archaeology and then sort of getting into games is the best route for you personally, as in, in terms of employment. Uh, <laughs> no, probably not. No. But it's not unheard of, right? It's not that you s sort of all of a sudden cannot switch into this, uh, given the right yeah. a bit of luck and the right sort of staying power. Yeah. Um, but you just then don't. I mean, you are in there as an archaeologist, yeah. but not because you are trained in archaeology, right? You have to really. But it doesn't mean that you cannot take on board these um, the lessons that you've learned in there, right? So yeah, I mean, we can clearly do more here still, but it's yeah. very tough, as you say, very very tough. Yeah. One thing that I just wanted to hi highlight is. Here already in just one paragraph, basically you have this quite destructive critique of civilization. You know, it's basically ethnocentric, unilinear, evolutionary model, <laughs> right? Um, Which is an apt description. It is an, a very apt description, right? And something that archaeologists will immediately understand. Yeah. Then the question becomes why it's like, well, maybe we can use this as education, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and then also this, and then he also makes this this pitfall of an overly simplistic system of diffusion, then which is culture points. But all of civilization is overly simplistic. 
that is Sid Meier's point, right? Yeah. And I don't think that the culture points are more simplistic than other systems. Yeah. So there's some beef there, but at the same time, app description. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, um, while, while Omar is uh, grinding his gears. Oh, clearly. <laughs> um, I did, in fact, uh, sign a defensive pact with the goal. Excellent. Now you just need to get them to 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 like hit you. You just need to prop them. You just need to make sure that they declare war on you without you declaring war on them. Wow. Yeah. Or just yeah, man. This is your this is your goal because this is this is uh, how you're yeah. gonna how you're gonna get. You are this. This is the typical civilization thing. Is this is the point where I'd give up. I'd be like, yeah, I'm never winning this. Fuck it. Yeah, and the, the problem really with Civilization 4, and that really changes in Civilization 5, I think, is it's, it is all about expansion. You are now curtailed, right? In this, in this corner of the world where you just have a little... It's not that you made more stupid choices than the AI, right? You just have a little bit less territory to work with than uh, the goal and there's just no um and if now also with the person who has a has a vessel like uh, Budica, right the goal just has this very nicely spaced out, spaced out mega big chunk of continent yeah and that's that's just the wind condition <laughs> yeah and it has been the wind condition for for all the way all of uh uh, all the way up until Civilization 4, and it really only starts changing in my... I mean, I'm not a, an expert player of all civilizations, right? As we have seen on stream. Yeah. Uh, but it really starts uh, breaking down with Civilization 5. I also, really like, cool. until f 5 and maybe 6, you could never, like, catch up again. Whereas in 5 and 6, at a po like, I always start quite slow, and then suddenly I steamroll. Yeah. But yeah. it does. You cannot really recover from this, even though you're only 300 turns in. I mean, only, so to say. Um, also, the games are longer. I feel. I mean, I, w I. Most of the games in Civ Six are about 300 turns for me. Mm -hmm. So this final few hundred turns are such a grind. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> hey, well, we have a paper about that <laughs> as well. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it is a grind um, for sure. And um, th that is also the, something that is now actively no fixed in the, the new I mean, it's still a grind, right? I mean, yeah. it is still a grind, but it is less grindy. Uh, it used to, used to be this mega grind. Now, if you now want to win, you can do it, Omar. It's just... I, this sounds like I'm some sort of coach here, but you could do it. It's just you don't really want to do it because it just just be such a, a, a grind of just producing units and just smashing them against seal and just waiting for that opportune moment. Uh, a couple of uh, safe scum moments as well, right? There's um, no real then, fun in there. Yeah, right. That's yeah, and, that's the problem. <laughs> yes, this is the problem, and I think. Once again, I think this is a problem that Old World has already say, uh, solved better than Civilization VI, but Civilization V and VI have already solved this this much, much better, for sure. I mean, you're not doing too too bad, eh, Omar? I mean, in terms of power, yes, but in terms of uh, score? Yeah, so, so that, that's the thing that always annoys me. I mean, it's in all saves, right? But the fact that yeah. you cannot really play it without having shit ton of military units... Because if you yeah. go low on the military guns, they will attack, no matter what. I mean, how friendly they even are with you, they, they will attack. That's basically what yeah. will happen. And it's yeah. just, yeah, annoying. Yeah, it is annoying. It is annoying, for sure. And that's why I loved, I just loved playing Venice in Civ Five. That's still my favorite Civ. <laughs> to every action, there is always opposed an equal... Um, all right, let's uh, go to this other paper. Uh, also, by the way, first briefly, uh, I call out by Felix to a very cool example of using games for education. Yeah. 
And yeah, I can see that. That's a great example, like uh, using Tears of the Kingdom to teach engineering class. Um, I also, I all, it, because this thing, this game makes me feel like an engineer as well when I'm putting all of these these things together, right? These, all these, uh, what is the name of them again? Mm -hmm. uh, says it right here, of course. Uh, uh. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Well, anyway. All these machines, basically, whatever, whatever, with the, with the gummy power powder, the glue, the glue power. I forgot what it's called, but uh, but yeah, no, for sure. Switch to um, Douglas yeah. 2002. Yeah. All right, take it away. Um, okay, so this paper, basically, it's interesting. This paper has two uh, two argumentation lines. Uh, uh, one mm -hmm. successful, the other doomed one to fail. The other doomed <laughs> to fail. Yeah. So, yeah. and these two are. This paper is written in two thousand or published at least in two thousand and two, mm -hmm. and it deals with the back then, quite literally just founded discipline of game studies, and he deals with all sorts of methodological and disciplinary issues pertaining to the foundation of this new discipline and whether, in particular, and that was, and we can talk about it or not because maybe it's not super interesting, whether or not game studies should try back then to develop their own methodological tools or whether they should borrow methodological tools from adjacent dis disciplines like media studies, film studies, and whatnot. That's one line of argumentation. Yeah. I think just to, to briefly briefly go in there and then maybe after that we can sort of leave that uh, where it is. He's particularly reacting against uh, this very famous uh, now especially, but even back then already, right? A game mm -hmm. scholar in terms of game scholar <laughs> circles, Espen Arset, mm -hmm. um, who basically has this very... Um, not even passive-aggressive, but just outright ag aggressive opening of um of the game studies uh, journal um where he says like the very i just linked it in the chat mm -hmm. where he basically is literally carving out and erecting these walls vis-a-vis -vis other disciplines yeah. with uh, literature studies and some other things like new media studies really being like yeah you, you can go and <laughs> at the end he says you're welcome but you have to really sign up to this project of game studies um, I, I've honestly always found this to be exactly the, the wrong way of starting something like game studies, which I think actually has has really cemented a very particular type of doing game studies that is very quite closed and very particular. Not not that it's a wrong kind of game studies, but uh, but it, it's yeah, it's not great. And I can see how this person, Christopher Douglas. Um, is like, yeah, no, I, 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 I can be here too, as yeah. as somebody in an English department. Yeah, I think he then just gets into the the trap that he's just doing exactly the same thing as Arsad has been doing. Yeah. So um, that Maybe I think he, is he he could have just said I can be here too, and here is how. Bam. Yes, here's how, and uh, but now he makes a case like we can do this, and then he basically makes a case that doesn't really make any specific case at all for why English or literature studies or whatever really is very different or really does this different thing, and he doesn't make a case for his discipline. He just makes a case for I can analyze games, <laughs> which, which I fair mean, enough. Yeah, he analyzed it, but it was weird that in the end he circled back and, and quite literally said. And here is how these other disciplines can contribute. And you're like, he really is just okay. But you just did game studies, right? Like, y yes, <laughs> yeah, you did exactly the thing that Arsat said people should be doing. And you didn't really at any one point say, and this is why literature studies is important. Yeah. No, not so at just, all. You just use some fancy quotes from some other like scholars. That's 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 all. That's you want. that's it. Yeah. So you from that angle, that. yeah, this paper. Yeah. Let's just throw it in the trash heap of uh, academics fighting about disciplines and disciplinary borders. Who cares? <laughs> I mean, there is a little bit of value, I think, but only a little bit in in con considering 
some of the arguments around the methodologies of used in arcade gaming as a field and whether what is arcade gaming doing as a field and we have a paper about this coming out in two days um, <laughs> but I, I can see how th this could, could have been a similar discussion um, or parallel discussion yeah okay I, I will say that there I have this one avenue where I'm like why didn't you go there yeah. that he clearly talks so much about the colonizing attempts that Arsad is also talking about mm. then he analyzes civilization I was so ready for yeah. this guy to come swinging out and say and you know what you are just doing this this civilizational thing you're just doing the colonizing attempt just for yourself right yeah. he just doesn't go there um, yeah. which I think is a a missed opportunity to really tie the knot together on this paper if you really, really desperately needed to. Yeah. Probably he didn't go there because he didn't want to make too many enemies in the field. <laughs> yeah. That he was clearly trying to be a part of. <laughs> um, okay. I was not like shooters. I, I found that. Oh, lordy. Oh, yes, for sure. You shoot them, there are some more things you shoot them. No, you can absolutely and 100% make story driven first person shooters. To get this out there. Yeah, it's it's such a it's such a blase way of thinking about. I mean, it's not that I think. Uh, there's also the other side is like people that still worship the altar of Half Life Two, <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, yeah, no, there's yeah. We, we really have done better since. Don't worry, right? Yeah. But I mean, as a storytelling game, it's really and an emergent storytelling game as well is really not the worst at all <laughs> um so no um I, I also found his albert camus sort of analogy with like and then putting it against this this quote from lara croft's developer who said the whole tomb raider world is utterly dependent on lara's size and animations distance she can jump leads run forward and fall are set variables in this way her world is designed for her to exist in compared to the real world which is not designed necessarily for, which, which is not designed for. yeah and so uh, I, unless I you like, unless you believe certain things about the world yeah my, my, what do you think about the point i, have oh, I thought it was an interesting point to make that he he arrived at the, uh, like it was interesting that he had to make such a huge circle yeah to arrive to a point that the developer was like here it is and I, I like the Albert Camus analogy, but it's just, it's it's his way of saying, look, literature studies matter because I can use Albert Camus to say the same thing. But that's that is whatever. That is <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've we've had this critique of archaeo gaming a couple of times that yeah, we can use archaeology to basically do you know what amounts to virtue ethnography. <laughs> yeah. Um, you don't need Albert Camus. It's it's like it's like a more like a haha. -ha, look, uh, this is an analogy, which yeah. is you know that's that's kind of fine, but that doesn't make the case for your field, dude. It just makes you the case that you're kind of pedantic about it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and honestly, I didn't think it was the best anal anal analogy at all because you're, um, because it, it, this doesn't make game. I mean, if you wanted to spin it out, this doesn't make games absurd. This does. No. This does. There's no person that sort of sits here and and experiences the games as absurd, right? If you sort of stand back all the way from uh, very far, you're like, oh, that's actually kind of an absurd thing that you're doing. Yeah, but you know, uh, that's no. But I think that was his point, right? That games are not absurd in that sense. That we're making games because we're trying to make constructs. Like in, in realizing the absurdity of the world, we're trying to make a world that makes sense, and then these games it is not the of the are these constructs, survive, but the one or at least that's how I read it change. anyway. Uh, I didn't read it that way, I just read it like you know, um, um, because he says here, here, he says, in the face of these absurd realizations, humans create constructs that help them escape it. And then he says, games, therefore, do not threaten, blah, blah, blah. Um, they prefer, um, let me find it. Games, therefore, do not threaten film status so much as they threaten religion because they perform the same existential shooting task as religion. They prefer a world of meaning. It's with...
in which we not only have to task a task perform, but a world that is made with us in mind. And then he makes the point about Lara Croft. So a world that is not absurd in that sense, because it's a world. Yeah, that okay, in, in that sense, absurd. Yes, okay, yes. No, you're, you're right, you're right. That is the, the, the correct reading of this. Um, but, I mean, he also, the world is absurd only by virtue of being perceived by our minds, which desire order and design in it. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that is, of course, the, the, um, the, the sort of the double meaning of the absurd in Camus's way of going about it, that he yeah. makes, he makes these things, the things that he makes are uh, absurd things, right, as well, in terms of the, re the, the stuff that is happening, and then... So it it has this double double meaning. Yeah, it's it's an okay point, but I don't. Yeah, I mean, then you have to take it up with Camus, you know, like. But yeah, as as, as the, that the the whole point could have been made by saying uh, the person who designed Lara Croft said it's a world made for her, and this is what we maybe this is a reading that you can do in games that we like yeah. games because they are worlds made for us with us I being the avatar that exists in that world. I right, and I now remember just looking at this again as well. Is this is also where I think actively embracing Camus uh, and this idea of the world is not designed for us really does not help you out because he actually comes up with this. Maybe it's on purpose, but I think this pretty absurd statement. Right, that like how oh, well in a game you find a key, you put it in your yeah. inventory, and you know you will need it. And he makes this, I, I honestly don't know, unless you really try to do this, right, as a, some sort of absur absurd thing, which then, like, hats off, because it works. Um, but here, I might find and pocket a key in this bug-ridden piece of software we call reality as well, but it almost certainly will not end up opening a door for me. Yes, it will. <laughs> like, 99.99% .99 of the time that you pocket a key, <laughs> you are pocketing it simply because you know at a certain point, it will it open a door for you. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I mean, that's the thing. That's also what I think I, I have many beefs with Camus, but because I, I think it's the, the, the idea that the world is so absurd is so overstated, I think, generally. But, yeah. um, and like this exactly, this is where you, I, I don't know if this is a pedantic person, right? But this is where being pedantic with literature studies really gets you into a bind because you get to, sta to say a stupid statement like this that if in reality somebody pockets a key, yeah. then it's not gonna open a door. Yeah, hella yeah, it's gonna open a door. <laughs> anyway, okay, or, or a bicycle lock or whatever, right? I have a key in my pocket right now that I'm quite sure will open my bicycle lock. Just, just, yeah. just, um, anyway, whatever. That We are getting hung up on the weaker parts we of this are. paper. The, the thing that we said we wouldn't. Yes, let's not do um, it, let's not do it. We have a, a, a glorious, uh, how much, uh, glorious five minutes to discuss the rest of this paper. <laughs> well, I have to say, um, da, 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 let's see what we have. Um, I mean, to, to, to not point too far, more or less the things that we already discussed previously with uh, Laura Donaldson and Friedman here being taken up again. All right, this idea of expansion. Yeah. yeah, and then particularly across the axis of, and this I think is an interesting one, Americanism. Yeah, exactly. That's the, that's the particular angle that I want you to discuss. Everything in life yes. is somewhere else. Go. Get there. Tell me, tell me your thoughts. Tell me your hot takes. Yes. Uh, let me get, because this is pretty far in the paper. But, so one thing I, I, I was, I thought was, sorry, he makes this discussion about barbarians, right? Mm -hmm. and Which okay. are, he, he consistently calls Indians then. Yeah, so He's that's like, one of my These barbarians are just Indians, yeah. yeah. So this was my first, like, sort of uh, eyebrow raised, like, okay, you call them Indians, clearly you, you have a, something in mind, and it's clear later what he has in mind for calling them Indians. I think it does him absolutely no service because Actually, there are Native American tribes war, in these games that, that you can play as. And yeah, which he then has to sort of explain away later. <laughs> yeah, but it's just does, it just breaks down your point because, yeah, you can't play with them. So then either you say the games perceive Native Americans as playable factions and there is a level lower of, like, humans that are not even considered, that are the barbarians, but then they are not Indians. 
right? Or they are, and then, so it, it was a bit all over the place, I, th I thought, at that point. But I did like this idea, which is also pretty similar to what Laura was, was arguing, obviously, about these tribes that are not... He, he says, like, this game, this, these tribes are not migratory, and then you start off your civilization as being migratory. And somehow, these, these cultures that exist out there, that are already sedentary, they do not have the opportunity to develop and you being a migratory like at, at your core you are allowed to develop yeah. and this there is a conflict and i thought that was an interesting reading yes that is an that is an interesting reading that you are starting out as moving <laughs> yeah and the other ones aren't and this is i mean this is a good example of where um any model of history that you would hold in your mind for civilization just doesn't work yeah <laughs> right that in a, in a very deep way civilization is not simulational at all yeah. <laughs> right N not simulational of history right of history yeah. as it was uh, because this is exactly where things just just already break from the beginning yeah. and i think that's a, it's a good it's a good good point to make what i really don't like is that he he goes with this idea of um america is the model for civilization yeah because it 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 overstates america's role here i think so i'm i'm gonna go on and that's a limb coming here. From, from us who have claimed at different points that american history has been like central to the development of the game right and yeah but but not this central but not this central no i i agree right uh, and, and not central in this way in fact you know not sort of to own to 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 want to own the atrocity in the sense of i want to own the atrocity but no. clearly no. this model of colonization is a european model of colonization or you could even say this is an inherent thing of empire that's yeah. a bigger discussion to have, which we had. Let's not yeah. have it now. <laughs> um, and it's really trying to hunt for that American exceptionalism yeah. in this idea of terra nullius, which is mm -hmm. not, it's literally a Latin term, right? So let's, let's be. And just to, to read the quote here for. Yes, go for it. Attention, it. He says, thus far, I have argued that the civilization series is infused with an American ideology that is comforting insofar as it justifies genocidal practices and the stealing of land by positing an empty virgin continent that is paradoxically, paradoxically populated by what the game, call, the game manual calls minor tribes that can't improve the land and tame the wilderness. So this is, this is his like sort of bottom line. And then he says, um, blah 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 central tenet of one american mythology that the united states was founded upon an empty land devoid of inhabitants yeah um, and yeah. and this is i think a good example um of getting stuck in this myth yeah because you're getting stuck in this myth and because of that it all it has to be american no, no. This myth is the myth of colonialism, right? This is, this yeah. is um, whatever, wherever you want to, however you want to culturalize that. Mm -hmm. American or, you know, it's the Dutch version. or yeah, it, that's, that's like Democracy almost beyond the, the point and impossible to do. Yeah. It, it is this, the colonial system, or maybe you could even say the empirical system, or the, the imperial system, right? That, yeah. that is doing that. Uh, yeah, anyway, yeah, that is, I think... I think he, he later sort of contradicts himself, because at some, he later, a bit later he says, um, the game, I have highlighted this as the central point, the game places the player in the position of guiding America's development, even if the yeah. name of the civilization we play is different. We reenact the historical territor um, territorial drama, the rules are the natural and naturalized logic of development within which that drama is played out, this process goes beyond the audience reacting to an ideological image or representation. Instead, the player participates in producing an ideological effect that is not totally explicit anywhere and that she or he may not fully comprehend. But of course, full comprehension is not a goal of the national symbolic 
or of ideology. And I think right there is like, but then any, and then yeah. why America yeah. specifically? Yeah. I, I don't and get I think it. that is, no, I don't get it either. And I think this is, um, I mean, I'm not saying this is a point that you cannot make at all, but, but then like own it and really try to make this point really yeah. try and, and find it and not just say the land is empty and it's being thought of as empty as if it is the wild west right or so uh, you know the, the area around um, uh, Plymouth <laughs> or whatever um, you have to you have to cast your net a bit wider and say okay this is a, a central feature of yeah. right or this is a very American model of yeah. the way the world works I mean, he, he later makes this absurd point where he says players also learn to literally play by the rules in the game, which helps incorporate us into a society in which there will also be rules to be followed. But that's any game, man. <laughs> any game on, I mean, okay, let's not get too philosophical, but any video game you play, you have to play by the rules. That's not some kind of conditioning that is happening by playing civilization that you're being conditioned into being a good, you know, a, a good bond in the in American society. I think you're reading either reading too much into it, or then it's bigger than America. Then it's the entirety of Western conception of the world. Yeah, exactly right. This is this is. Um, I mean, yes, this is then becomes a point that is so germane that it, yeah. it really. I mean, it's still a point you have to make, but you don't have to make it about America. Or you don't have to make no. it about games, and that is basically saying, you know, as 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 consumer and producer of culture you're always contributing to the system called culture yeah uh, yes <laughs> yeah so but this i is, want uh, you to tell me what do you think before we close off about mm-hmm. his take on jared diamond oh my god that's where my eyebrows were not being raised anymore they were just mm. your eyes were away. looking back into your brain from oh Norway. my <laughs> i was i i was i was like did this guy genuinely genuinely try to to say americans ideology is bad but here we go because we've got this objective explanation of how this actually went wrong in jared diamond which is Jer- oh well okay here let's go let's go a bit wild here what i was just saying right now the wind condition for civilization one to four is just having the biggest land right <laughs> It, it's it's classical Jared Diamond in that sense, right? It is Jared Diamond before Jared Diamond was a thing. Jared Diamond is like, oh, I found something. No, he didn't find jack shit. He just basically said, there, that's true, that's true, that's true. Yeah, it's true. And it still doesn't say anything about, well, I don't know if we have to actually say what J- Jared Diamond and who he is, but basically it means, literally the whole title, Guns, Gerbs, and Steel is what made the West the best. <laughs> Yeah. Right. This idea of we had this huge land mass, we had viruses raging across uh, Eurasia and Africa, and that's not what America has. We had um, uh, sort of this this de- this technological diffusion happening only in Europe or in Europe, sort of reaching its pinnacle. And that's how you can explain why we conquered America. No, no, that's that's not how you can explain that at all. And I think many people have made that point. We don't have to relitigate that. But then to use it as in this article like and this is like this is the objective take on this i was like dude <laughs> dude yeah. I, I mean and then also i want to say like okay let's going back to this idea that as literature studies you have something to contribute and you say as a literature studies person you say jared diamond <laughs> like what dude what oh my god yeah I was... Oh my god. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. I think this was as a... I think as a, as a scholarly article that staked oh. its claim on a, a thorough analysis of civilization, then this, this just failed. It's like, okay, yeah. Not I that, mean, not I think that there, th- is, there are a couple of points. Like here, he's, he makes... At, at, after the, his whole Jar and Diamond like exploration, which was, which, mm-hmm. um, he goes on into how 
the forking paths created by civilization basically so this idea that you can yeah. play as whatever and st and be the dominant culture is presented Once as alternative history but in the end the mm. it, it is actually the same and he yeah. also says it somewhere in the game has abstract radical potential that it is yeah. circumscribed by how things will turn out so this yeah. this sense of boundedness of our history right the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he makes the, that point but the, the way he got there is slightly confusing and, and, and uh, problematic. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess that's it. That's exactly the failing, is like he makes s some pretty salient points <laughs> yeah. uh, that have been made uh, even by Friedman before and by Donaldson yeah. before at that point in time and have will be made a couple of times again by other people. Yeah. Um, but then how he gets here, he just doesn't show at all that the analysis is actually going the right way. It is more like that point over there and i don't think you need any of his analysis to arrive at that point no um and then somehow at the end we're talking about hackers and i was like <laughs> okay just <laughs> i give up yes <laughs> uh, yeah oh and uh, here here uh, even in highly reflective play, as is intensely the case in fan discourse on games, the ideological procedures of the game may not come to light. I was like, yes, they are coming to light. That's the whole point. That's the argument you've been making. It doesn't maybe come to light in the sense of I have active thoughts about it, but absolutely it is coming to light because that is why this is this recursive mechanism between me and the computer, <laughs> right? That is the coming to light part of it. Um, and then here... Um, I call it the fallacy of intentional understanding, that you have to speak something aloud before you understand it, which is, the, is not the case at all, right? And then such discourse, he, the type of discourse that game studies should be going for, right, includes discussion of the aesthetic qualities of the rules themselves, why some rules and algorithms are downright beautiful. And I think he gets, it, this to me comes out of nowhere, because he doesn't talk about it at all like the one that recently had a polite smiling cooperative gandhi send an army of 40 or so indian units across a continent and over my peacetime border to launch a pearl harbor attack on my innocent persian civilization now this is the paper i would want to read is why that is a beautiful rule yeah because he never because I, he, that's no explanation <laughs> to it right like why is it beautiful <laughs> it is it is yeah exactly that's 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 what we need to know right the, he sort of ends with the thing that like okay maybe discuss aesthetics and take your literature studies and just do this really right yeah. um this is the two-way process of configuration that digital game studies will have to address in the years ahead and then i just wrote it did not and it still has not right and it didn't over here all right parisianin um question for omar have we outdid Boudicca so much? I don't know. <laughs> Have we I honestly, I got Boudicca so much? I mean, we're 500 points ahead of her, so I mean, kind of, but... But how? Something what happened here. Um, I, I guess happened? they uh, either lost the war or uh, they also... Korea I mean, wasn't a vessel plummeted. anymore, so... They I mean, like, bam, Korea is not a vessel anymore. Korea is that's not a vessel probably... That's literally it. Oh, that's it. Then go attack again. What are no, you attack because again? look look at the power of Korea and look at my power. <laughs> no, man. Go for it. You can take Korea. No, I cannot. <laughs> Ally with um, no. Ally, Okay. We will we will talk about this next stream. I'll, I'll, then, I'll, uh, I'll mm. quickly show you that I cannot mm -hmm. because... Because what? A doom stack. Uh, the stack, the doom. I mean, still all the ships, but still... Um, I don't, I cannot upgrade my units. So, I mean, I can, but not all of them. Takes a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, not right now. I'm sort of more like, let's do this. Let's take, get, get into an alliance with Budica and stomp on those Koreans. I also probably In -game cannot Koreans, because she hates, I don't have any problem. She hates me. <laughs> I mean, Omar, you have a whole week to make this work between you. Uh, I might not be there next week, so who knows? <laughs> oh, oh dear. Then, oh, then, then who's to... playing? Nobody's playing. We're, I'm not taking up Omar's game after this. That will be not a great idea, I think. So then it will be no Civilization 4 next week, I guess. 
I, I'm not sure. I might be there. We'll see. Uh, you think also, I might you. just nuke everyone. Oh, that's, that's clearly sure, a, Gandhi. an option. <laughs> sure, Gandhi. I was hoping he was gonna say Gandhi like nuked, nuked my butt, but there were no nukes in, in the, at the end of this paper, and I was slightly disappointed. If you're mentioning Gandhi and you wanna say that Gandhi attacked human civilization and there is no mention of nukes, you've done the analysis wrong. Or you've done your research wrong. You've done the meme wrong. You've done the yeah. meme wrong. <laughs> but clearly, it was not about the memes. There was no memes in this paper. No, no. Well, actually, there was a meme, and that's that's the meme of Amer America. America being the lens through which to understand. Um, yeah. All. Everything. <laughs> all really. Yeah. Um. um anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, I was saying. Um, first paper that I was. Uh, because I hadn't read this one before, um, that I was disappointed by. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it was a bit disappointing. It's true, I agree. And I will tell you yeah, what you are. but that is fine. There's not all papers have to be referenced in future works on this, and this is one of those papers that I will say, sorry, Christopher Douglas, not not meant personally because this is a work from you from like more than twenty years ago. Yeah. But this is this is not this is not gonna go into the uh, into the the annals of the stuff you should really read when you're thinking about civilization, Absolutely. the game, yeah. or civilization, the thing. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Let's end off with a bang. <laughs> Let's end with a bang. <laughs> yeah, not the kind of bang you want anything to end on, though. But anyway, no. anyway, only <laughs> no. only civilization game. No, not even civilization not even, game. Yeah. No, no, not no. just any game. But... Oh well, it happens. Well, it definitely happened here. Yeah. Nuke, nuke happens. Nuke well, happens. We, no, we, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. We haven't, we haven't, we haven't made it happen yet. No. So, um, but um, let's. Um, but uh, but um, but um, let's good. end it. Let's end it. So we'll we, see about uh, Omar. Next week. We're only, we're only have just cracked the millennium in the civil we have so we we are we still have you you need to play civilization 4 for a whole lot more <laughs> i mean there's 90 turns left so uh hurry up <laughs> well we are going to uh start another game that's the only way i think that will we be might. the only way we might yes all right cool oh i i might um, I mean, we'll see we'll see we'll see all right cool felix you have a great night as well thanks for hanging out Parisianin. Thanks Pasco, Ralph, for hanging out. Everybody. Pasco, Ralph, everybody hanging out with us. Major things. Uh, we're going to the... Oh, nice. Total War Warmer 3. This is one of those games on my to-do list in the sense of I was want to get into it. I just want yeah. to, but only so much time. And so oh, much articles true. about civilization to read. All right. Yeah, exactly. All those articles. Get you all later. Later. Yeah. Bye. Stay happy. Stay healthy. Bye. Bye.